Good morning, good life. Welcome back to Amy TV, where we come together to help you go after the life you want. First, let me say it has been a minute since we've done a little bit of Amy TV book club action over here. So I wanted to bring a little list in case you were looking for a few options. The majority of the time when we talk about Amy TV book club, now it's over on Instagram actually. So go and check that out at Amy TV book club. We share recommendations, we share reading tips over there. Um, so if you've been kind of missing these videos, we're trying to make it more frequently over there. So uh, a little bit of IGTV and posts and a lot of fun stuff. So check that out. Before I actually go into the list of the books I want to share with you today, I imagine that if someone clicks on the name of this video that they're feeling in a negative space. Certainly if you would be willing to venture to potentially say I'm broke or describe yourself as that way or to describe yourself as someone who doesn't have a lot of expendable income, has a hard time making it to the next paycheck. And I want you to know that I can sit in that seat. I have seen that before in my past and I don't think that it's something that you fix and it's perfect forever. We're constantly getting better at taking care of our money. It is something we have to work on every single day. I have learned so much as I continue to grow up and manage my finances responsibly, but it is never something where you finally hit a moment where you make enough money and everything's fine. There's not just going to be this click and everything is going to be perfect in your financial life. You work at it. So I hope that you're watching this with an open mind because when you say those words, I'm broke. There's really nowhere but up to go from there. And that's what I'm hoping will be a catalyst for you right now to be more optimistic, to start thinking about what the potential could be. And I really think these books are going to help you reach that potential. If you couldn't tell, I am a huge proponent of just having this conversation. I feel like if I could go back and say that there was something missing in my life and what I wish I could do to help others, it was just having people around who were comfortable talking about money, not just in a negative way, in a realistic way, but in a positive way and helping to pave that way. So I'm on a crusade to have that conversation. I hope you'll get more comfortable with me. And so that's what we're going to do today. Pro tip, okay, I realize that I'm gonna rattle off a few books for you that would be excellent reading material. But if you are the brokest of broke, buying a book might sound like a very far-fetched idea and not a good use of your money right now. Maybe you need to buy groceries, maybe you need to go and do something for yourself that's more important, I get that. But I'm trying to get you on the path to education here that's going to change your life because I know you're going to continue to work at it. You wouldn't be here if that wasn't the case. And so we've got to get there, right? So pro tip, go to the library. I mean, it's it's an amazing place that even will help you without even, I don't even think you have to go anymore. You can actually borrow books from the library in digital form. So it is not necessarily something where you have to go see if they have the book in stock in, in person and, and borrow the book. You might be able to get it on your device and borrow it and not have to buy the book at all. The other tip that I would give you is if you have an Amazon account and if you have a smartphone device, if you have a Kindle would be amazing amazing as well. But if not, smartphone is fine with the Kindle app. Amazon allows you to download books, the samples for free. And I recommend this to everyone. It does not matter how much money you have in the bank. You should always download the free sample, even before you buy a hard copy of something. Download the sample and see if it's even something you're gonna continue to read. I do this all the time. If I get a book recommendation from someone and I'm like, that sounds so good. I will not spend $9.99 on it. I won't pay $24.99 for the book to come to me in the mail. I download the sample. It varies how long it will be for different uh, authors and different books, but I can see if this, this thing is gonna be my jam if I can get into the way that the author is teaching me and if I'm actually going to read it. That will be a worthy spend of my money. So if you're trying to make this purchase decision very carefully, these are four amazing investments for you. You will pull from these books continually through your financial wellness journey, but you don't have to buy them if you don't want to. You can borrow 
or you can try it before you buy it, and I highly recommend you do. My first recommendation is by Robert Kiyosaki, and it is the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, what the rich teach their kids about money that the poor and middle class do not. Sounds very sexy. It was initially not one that I gravitated toward. Just the title in general, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, sounded very um, separating and it just didn't feel like the right vibe, but I had heard so many recommendations of this book, I had to pick it up. After a period of time when all the smart people in your life that you come into contact with keep recommending something to you, you have to give it a chance. And what I realized was, you know what, it is very, separating. It is breaking up the rich from the poor. Why? Because that is just a fundamental thing. People have money, people don't. People have a little, people have a lot. What does that look like? Why does it look like that? And how does an abundant mindset versus a scarcity mindset play a role when that's a, the case? especially when you're being brought up by someone who thinks about money in a very specific way, whether it's extremely negative or extremely positive. I don't think that a lot of us would go back and say to our parents like, wow, you were really negative about money growing up until you realized later what positive would sound like and vice versa. We may not even really know we have an opinion on that, based on where we come from. But seeing what the other side is, and I think that's one of the most powerful things about reading is hearing someone else's perspective, seeing what the other side is saying so that we can understand it better, not judge somebody for rich or poor, but be able to understand how they came to those conclusions that made them take certain actions or made the people around them take certain actions to get to that point. That was the biggest thing that I picked up from this book. Highly, highly recommended. And um, Robert Kiyosaki also has a podcast. So if that's more your speed, definitely take a listen to that because he is talking about some very important stuff that we all really need to get educated on. And that's understanding what the difference between a scarcity mindset versus an abundant mindset will do for our financial wellness. The next one, and I, you know, I don't like to swear on this channel very often. I don't, you know, I don't do it. But I have to in this case because it's worth it. Jen Sincero's You Are a Badass at Making Money. This book, I, I initially, I'm not a prude, okay? I swear in real life. But when I saw the series of books called You Are a Badass, I just was like, I know that already. I don't, I don't need to read these books. So I just never gravitated toward them. Um, really just not interested at all. But again, heard amazing things about this one and I thought if there was one I could grab onto, I wanna see what she has to say about money. And I have actually been so impacted by this book. I only picked it up last year, um, specifically in the area of visualization. Visualization is something that always sounded so woo-woo-y to me. I didn't get very much on board with it. But when Jen talked about it in this book, I really started to understand. Like I said about Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, understanding scarcity versus abundance. Jen got me thinking about how do I start talking to myself that way? Not in a weird way, right? We gotta talk to ourselves though. How do I start talking to myself like this is already the case, that I am already going in a positive direction with my financial wellness? And um, also the female side of things. We as women have a very, very hard time talking about money because we were trained that that is not something that we talk about in everyday life. And that is part of the reason why I'm broke and having that conversation with yourself is such a lonely one to have because it feels like there's really nobody that can help you. And when you feel that way, you don't have the conversation and then we do not have the conversation. I think it's extremely important that women in general talk about money more, talk about what it means for us to make more, talk about what it means for us to make the same as a man in our position. And the only way for us to do that is to hear us talking about it more, hear women like people we look like talking 
about it more. So there was a lot of that in this one. And she is just such a fun writer, if you couldn't tell from the title. P.S. Somebody tweet her and tell her to come on my podcast because she is cool. This book only read it last year, but has left a huge impact on me and how I think about going in a better direction with my money every single day. Next is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. This is just one of the classics that you absolutely cannot skip reading. You've got to dig into this one. If you think about any famous, successful person that you've ever known, there is a strong likelihood they have been impacted by this book if they're handling their finances well, if they're going in the right direction, right? The biggest thing here is being able to go in and look at key stories about real people and how did Andrew Carnegie get to the point where he is and what happened for that to take place and what are the actionable things for that to take place and what can you learn for yourself? This book is old, okay? Original edition, 1937. This is old. The biggest thing I want you to learn from that, this old, old book that I'm asking you to read, is that we are not reinventing the wheel here. Getting rich, making money, being financially well, having wealth that actually means something for your life is no different today than it was in 1937. I know that sounds crazy. Sure, we can make money in different ways because of technology and the advancements of, our, of, of humankind, but the concepts for how we best manage, how we best grow, how we best save, they're pretty much the same as they've always been. And that is why the fundamental difference between someone who's been able to kind of find their way into a positive financial situation versus someone who hasn't is simply education, acquiring the information you need that you actually believe that you can no longer unknow so that you can do something about it. And that is why I recommend Think and Grow Rich. The last book that I'll recommend is probably going to sound like it's only for people who are in business, but I actually think that this has helped me tremendously take real action with even my personal finances. So I recommend it for everyone, certainly somebody who is in business, freelancing or taking it more seriously, it's their full-time thing. You have to read this book. It is a non-negotiable. And that is Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. This is real advice, not make sure your spreadsheets are updated, not make sure you log your expenses. This is real advice for managing cash flow. The majority of the time when we end up in a difficult financial situation, it's because there's no cash, okay? We just need the cash. We need to be able to buy something. We need to be able to take care of an emergency. We need to be able to see that our savings has something in it in case something happens, in case we're out of work, in case a pandemic puts us out completely. What are we gonna do in that situation? In order to be able to do that, you have to have an action plan for what to do with your cash flow. We always hear pay yourself first. That is pretty much the concept of profit first, the company profits first, so that we make sure we handle expenses and everything else accordingly, but also in your own personal life, profit first, save first. Of course we live paycheck to paycheck and we've got to make that bill and we have to make sure the light, the lights stay on, that the rent gets paid. But if we're only ever doing that, we can't really get out of a situation where that isn't always the case. Being able to save now means being able to save going forward. We can get more creative. We don't always need a lot of the things that we're paying for. How many subscriptions do you have right now? You really start to see those things much more clearly when you pay yourself first and say, oh, well, actually, we only have this budget for food. We only have this budget for streaming services. We only have this budget because we paid ourselves first, meaning we're saving for our future. We have something we can rely on if things go wrong. And that's really important. That's definitely the case in a business. You can't continue to grow if you don't figure out what growing really looks like. Just because you made X amount of revenue doesn't mean it's all yours. You gotta pay your taxes, okay? Make sure you pay your taxes. And also make sure you're profiting and paying yourself as the person that took the risk on the business. Why would we take all this risk, work more hours to not have to go clock in at a nine to five job if we're not going to get paid well? I highly recommend this book for figuring out what does that actually look like? Do you have the ability to take your side hustle full time based on what's happening? This is a real cash flow advice book that will change the game. 
change the game. Your spreadsheets are meaningless. Your P&L statement at the end of the year is meaningless unless you see where that cash is going. And this book will teach you that. Like I said, I'm on a crusade when it comes to talking about financial wellness. What does that look like for you? What does that look like for all of us? And the best way we can do this is to help each other. So if you have any recommendations of books that have helped you tremendously, whether it was real actionable advice for money, or it was just a mindset thing that changed the game for you, please leave those book recommendations in the comments below so that we can make it a resource for everyone watching here today. Don't forget way more updates for Amy TV Book Club over on Instagram. Make sure you follow and turn on notifications at Amy TV book club. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. As always, remember, subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love, and go after the life you want. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, this book is old, okay? I don't even know how old it is. Let me find out. 2017, but that cannot be accurate. No, original edition, 1937. This is old.